Tom, don't click your pen. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, it's Bold Predictions Day. So, you know, sometimes it's going great. Sometimes Ryan Day sets out specifically to spite me. But, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those days. It's always the most emotional day of the, of the week. And how's it going for you, considering what happened last week? Uh, spiteful Ryan Day. You know, if I was someone who did not find uh, parody accounts on Twitter particularly abhorrent and unfunny, I would definitely start a spiteful Ryan Day account about how, just tweeting out like all the stuff he's doing specifically to hose me on our bold prediction shows. There would be a lot of tweets. There would be a lot of tweets. You know what, Tom? I would like to see that. Um just the real victimization and the victimhood that you would live under based Mm -hmm. on bold predictions not happening because frankly your lack of research has been your undoing your lack of whimsy has been your undoing your lack of dedication to the process has also been your undoing me how am i doing you asked did you ask no no in fact i did not Let's talk about how I'm not, doing, not, Tom. Not interested. <laughs> Please go away. We don't want any. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. Uh, if you if you couldn't tell by Tom's demeanor, I did win last week's bold prediction contest. Tom, how many bold predictions did you get correct last week? I got two, and Ryan Day uh, Ryan Day intentionally kept me from getting a two pointer that would have gotten my total score to four. Oh, ooh. That's a tough one. I also got two correct. Although Tom, I will say, uh, should we go through all of the ones we got wrong or or do we let's not, let's not keep the people waiting. We don't need to talk about last week's news. Let's talk about this week's bold predictions. That's what the people came here for. Not to hear you gloating about an extremely rare win over me. Mm, I think this is two in a row. If we're, if we're keeping math, which I know we don't do here, but I would, I will say I did get two correct. My three-pointer of Mayan Williams going over 100 yards hit. I will also say my the one that I got correct, which was an 18-yard play by Ohio State between the 11, 30, and 14 marks of any quarter, hit three times. So technically, Tom, that is six points. That is a new record. Also, I would like to carry over three of those points <laughs> for this week. Mm, no, I'm going to respectfully decline there. Mm, on, uh, on actually multiple fronts, I'm going to respectfully decline. <laughs> so we will now get started, Tom. I think since I went last week, I will defer to you and allow you to see if you want to take the 220, 220, or however you would like to proceed. I am not going to push you into anything. No, and I am I am going to pass on 220, 220. I think that uh, I have I have proven. I have shown my powers that that by merely by predicting it, I can prevent it from happening. The weeks that I don't predict it, it does happen. So Ohio State fans, you are very welcome on behalf of me. Uh, I went back and looked at how many plays of 40 yards or more Ohio State has had. And this is just plays of 40 yards or more. In five of their nine games so far, they have had one or two plays or zero plays of 40 yards or more. I'm going to say that they have a pass of 40 yards or more in just the first half Mm. this week. So I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not taking runs. I'm not taking the second half. One pass of 40 yards or more in the first half. I will allow this if I can slice out one 90 second period in the half, in that first (laughs) half, which will just count as the bankrupt, bankrupt card on Wheel of Fortune. If, we, if you give me that one just for fun, if you uh, let's see, that means that uh, that means that uh, let's see, I will allow it on one condition. Mm-hmm. Either you take it down to 35 or I can provide a 90 second slice on any one of your predictions of my choosing throughout the show. Hmm. I'm just looking to see if uh, I have no no time based predictions, so I will allow it. <laughs> All right. About, so no, yes. How so, about this? Thir- a, a, a thirty-five. No, let's go. I'll take one minute. One of minute. your okay. thirty. What minute will it be 
So, so you were taking one minute away from me. Okay. Yes. And I'll let you know after the game. No, come on. <laughs> oh, Tom, I hate to inform you that that 68 yard touchdown <laughs> pass is right in my same minute. It was uh, and almost it, nice and it almost counted. <laughs> and to clarify, the play either can begin in that minute or end in that minute. You know, like any if any part of that play occurs in that minute. I think or, it has to I think it has to be on the official stat book that that is the time of the play. But so, we may not know that exact time. It would have mm-hmm. to be on the TV screen but but mm-hmm. but see Ohio what, State is going to run done? the slowest Ohio State is going to run the slowest developing pass play in history. Well, cuz cuz here's what I'm saying, like they could be running it in the last 2 seconds of my mm-hmm. minute. Mm-hmm. So does that still count or they could the play could score in the last, in the first two seconds of my minute, you know. So here's here's it, my con- yeah here's my concern. I watched the Eric All touchdown. I know how long a play can take. I mean that that was like 17 minutes of game action there. How about I'm this? Gonna, I'm going to give you me to- 90 seconds, but it has to be confined within those 90 seconds entirely. 75 seconds. 78 seconds. I wish we could make these things more complicated. 78 75. seconds. 70, okay. 75 seconds. All right, good. Uh, you, dang, you gave me 78. Okay, but which 75? Um, I might need some help on the clock math on this one. I'm going to choose the first quarter, and I will take minutes uh, the, from the, from the eight-minute mark of the first quarter to the – Look at that, 645. So from 8 to 645, please, please let that hit at that point. Um, so that is can, the, the bankrupt can hour. Can find entirely to that, that 75 seconds. Yes. And, and, and what was your prediction? A 50 yarder? I forget. 40 yarder? <laughs> Ohio 40 State runs play. for two yards, throws for two yards or more in the first half, <laughs> excluding. Okay. Yes, Ohio State has a has a pass of 40 yards or more in the first half, excluding the first quarter, eight minutes to 645, can find entirely to that span. <sighs> hey, we only have 13 more to go, and we're like 45 minutes into the show. Great job. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I swore I would not I would not bicker today. Um okay, in the in the first half. Okay. Um mine and I again. I need to get the stats here because there's a reason I have this one up here. Kenneth Walker will have a play from scrimmage of at least 36 yards. Now, Ohio State has given up, I think, three rushes of like 40 yards. And obviously, this is probably going to be a rush, but you know, I would like a little insurance if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kenneth Walker, I think, has seven rushes of 30 yards or more this season. So he's, he's done it about 0.7 times per game. Ohio State has allowed it half that, half that many. So I'm saying uh, this is more than just a 30-yarder. I'm taking an extra six. And, you know, at some point, and so this is something Ohio State generally doesn't do. We, have, we know they have a tremendous rush defense. So what do you think, Tom? So – just since we've now established that it is very unlikely that Kenneth Walker will have one long stat padding run, I'm sure you will have no problem with mine. And we can just say, say thumbs up on both of these. Kenneth Walker has been held under 5.3 yards per carry three times this season. Excluding his longest run of the day, removing the longest run of the day, Ohio State holds him under 4.5 yards per carry on Saturday. Since we've now established that it is extremely unlikely that there is a long run, that shouldn't that exclusion should not matter. Your thoughts. Tom, I appreciate the work that you have put into that one. That is is very similar to one that I'm going to have here in a little bit. So, um, well, we're scratching each other's backs. Um, so, the lo- excluding the longest run, and who knows that longest run may just be like 12 yards. You know, right. yes, it could be 12 yards. But if it's you know if he's held to 20 carries for 60 yards and then has an 80 yard touchdown, mm-hmm. that would not skew yards. That, yes. So excluding. Uh, the longest run under under 4.5 yards per carry or 4.5 uh, let, let's yards say say 4.5 yards per carry or under okay walker held to 4.5 yards or under um 
I mean, that's what the Ohio State defense does, but they have not faced Kenneth Walker yet. So correct. This is this is one of the three to five Heisman Trophy candidates. So understood. I, I will allow that one. Or under. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. My next one. Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and Jackson Smith and Jigba will each have a play of at least 30 yards in this game. Only one of them did it. Only one of them caught a pass of 30 yards last week. Obviously, Garrett Wilson had the, the rush. Jackson Smith and Jigba had the, the, the reception, which was essentially a rush, if you will. Chris Olave, we know he's not that good. So I'm saying I, I do not know how many times it has happened this season. I can tell you how many 30-yard plays or 30-yard receptions, at least that, that each of them have, if you would like mm-hmm. that stat, Tom. For I, I think I will allow this with the condition that two of the three have to be over 40 yards. Or how about this? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stair-step this for you because, mm-hmm. you know, we live to make things more complicated. One has to be 40, one has to be 35, and then one has to be 30. Just because if we've learned anything on this show, it's that making things more complicated makes them better. I will go 30, 32, 38. <laughs> 30, 35, 38. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, and, and I don't have to tell you which ones, right? No, 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 no. You have to tell me which one is going to have one of at least 38 (laughs) and you need, and you need to pick them in sequential order too. If it's it's not in sequential order, it's not a combination, Tom, this is not a combination. Um, 32, 35, 38 yards. Okay. And, uh, so I have a related one, either one Ohio state receiver goes over 150 yards or two of them go over 125 yards. Here's why I picked those. Jackson Smith and Jigba has been the only receiver to exceed 150 yards. He's only done that once. Uh, Chris Olave, his season high was 126 against Oregon. Garrett Wilson, his season high was 126 against Purdue. So Jackson Smith and Jigba was way over 150 against Nebraska, but he's only done it once. And the only, other two guys have only done their, you know, over 125 once. So either one over 150 or two over 125. Are you asking me to tell you which one or is that the... No, this is this is I'm saying okay, either and, no, I don't know. I'm saying I'm saying either one will go over 150 or two of them will go over 125 because I think it's I've, going to be a very big passing day for Ohio State. Me too. And and I think it's you know I think either one guy is going to have like the crazy blow up day or it's going to be one of those you know a little bit like Oregon where they spread it around quite a bit and multiple guys are in that you know 115, 120, 130 kind of range. I think. And, and I did not predict this. I don't know. I did not. I think th- all three are going to go over 100 this this week, which kind of cuts down on the possibility of there being a, a 150 or or two 125s because they could all be like 115, something like that. 128. N- neither Alave nor Wilson has gotten to 128 this year, so that would have to be. If you if you'd like to if you'd like to make it if you'd like to make it more than one twenty five frankly this probably should be my two pointer is is really this is this is fairly bold it's only okay it's so only, we're two two at one twenty five or one at one fifty is that, is that mm-hmm. what you said and two okay. points you said okay no 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 uh, two of uh, two at one twenty five or one at one fifty you know I have these all years. written out I can I can just email this to you you don't actually oh no to I, I do not trust you thank you very much. Now, this was uh, specifically the three receivers, right? I said either one, Ohio, well, either one Ohio State receiver goes over 150 or two goes over 125. It, th- you know, if Jeremy Ruckert goes over 125, let me tell you, I'm counting it. So two Ohio State, sorry, two Ohio State players go over 150 yards receiving. All right. I'll, I'll, I will read. Oh, you said over 150? 150 or higher. You said two Ohio State players go, going over 150. That's what you said. No, I said either one Ohio State player okay. goes over goes 150 yards receiving or higher, mm-hmm. or two are 125 or higher. Exactly 125. We are set. <laughs> <laughs> My number three. Ohio State will rush for at least 200 yards, sack adjusted, take out the sacks, and pass for 300. 200 now, and 300. We, when you look at what Michigan State has done, 
this season. Now, I do not have the, the sack adjusted numbers. Maybe you can find it. Mm-hmm. But in terms of what they've given up rushing per game, and they don't have a lot of sacks. Uh, they've got quite a few, actually. Like, <laughs> over three a game, I, I believe it is. Um, but they have the, the most they've allowed this year is 167 yards to Youngstown State. Mm-hmm. So, or, I'm sorry, 182 to Nebraska. Um, against Maryland, it was 101. Purdue, 58. Michigan, 146. So that, that gives you an idea. Um, how many sacks per game? They're averaging 3.2. They're basically, they are essentially at the same number of sacks that Ohio State is. Ohio State right. was like 34. Michigan State was at 31. Because I, I looked at a sack-related one this week and decided it was too too close. It's essentially going against the Ohio State defense. Mm-hmm. You, you figure they're going to get two to three probably sacks this this week is probably a decent a decent ballpark idea and ohio state has hovered around that 200 yard mark Mm -hmm. and then gone below it because of sacks so i'm i'm going to eliminate those sacks and go 200 300 if uh if you're okay with that i'm gonna need if we're gonna do it sack adjusted i'm gonna need 210 201 no no 210 is fine i feel i feel good about this Mm -hmm. offense i feel good about the uh the Ohio State uh, situation, and I think there might be maybe some more running in, in the fourth quarter to maybe get me that extra 10 yards. And if I lose mm-hmm. it on 10 yards, will I be upset? Yes, of course, but that's the fun of this show. What's next? All right, so highest passing total for Michigan State against any Power 5 team other than Rutgers this season, because Rutgers, you know, Rutgers a gets a little time. asterisk, correct. Highest passing total against any Power 5 team this season for Michigan State is 287. They break 300 on Saturday. First time against a non-Rutgers Power 5 team all season long. 300 passing yards for Michigan State. Hmm. Against an Ohio State defense that is allowing 403 yards passing per game. Is that true? That sounds pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't look up Ohio State stats, but... but- but you thought it could be true. Um, sounded, so that means there's sounded, some leeway that on sounded this one. like that sounded about 120 yards too high. And um, and you know, I think the other the other thing that needs to go into this is while Ohio State did give up 300 passing yards last week, Michigan State is very clearly going to be trying to run the ball. They're going to be trying to control the clock and keep the Ohio State offense off the field. I think I, I don't know that they're, they're not gonna be able to do that the whole game. I think they're ultimately gonna need to do a lot of that passing, especially in the second half if they're behind a little bit. But that's that's where I'm thinking. You know, you're probably you're probably taking 25 snaps and handing it to Kenneth Walker. So you're really trying to get 300 yards on what 30 snaps, 40 snaps. That's a that's a pretty high yards per uh, yards per pass attempt number at that point. I I would take this no problem except for the fact that like Penn State threw for 361 against Ohio State, so that has me a little little concerned. Now I will say this: How about can, can we can we talk about the Penn State running game and the Purdue running game in, as compared to the I, Michigan State running game? You want to have I that can, conversation? I, I I completely understand. That's why I'm still all I can you give me? Can you strike the final three minutes of the game? I will strike the final seventy five seconds of the game. Ninety seconds. <laughs> Ohio State has taken a knee at that point. You know that. Well, I guess it depends on what I pick Ohio State to do, and we'll see if Ryan Day just wants to take a knee this week, as he did last week, failing to failing to finish the drill, Ryan Day. Uh, 300 uh, yards passing for Michigan State. Excluding the final. If you want to go 75, that's fine. 75 seconds. Of the game. Give me 80 seconds again. That's the second time this has happened. <laughs> Now, can I tell you which 75, or does it have to be the end of the game? You, you said the final 75 <laughs> seconds of the game. Fine. All right. So I, I will you, allow it. I, I have not gotten exclude any time from you, so I've, I'm, I have saved this up, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it for a good one here. So, well, and, and again, I don't, really, I don't know that I have any time ones, but I'm sure you can find something to do with some of these. Mm-hmm. My final one-pointer, a, the Buckeye offense will average – one yard per play, more than the most that Michigan State has allowed this season in a game. That, I believe, was 6.99. So we're talking eight yards per play from the Ohio State offense, which is something that they have done this season, but not obviously every week. I think they've done it five times. Let me look here. Once so you're, you, no, you are boldly predicting Ohio State to do something they've done in literally more than half of their games. But they've done it against worse teams. Like, they, okay, they did it against Minnesota. There were some big plays there. They did it against Akron. 
Rutgers. We know we can't count Rutgers, right? Mm -hmm. And Maryland. And Mm -hmm. then they did it against Purdue. They did Mm -hmm. not do it against Indiana, Penn State, or Nebraska. I would say that those teams are commensurate very much so to Michigan State. Against Oregon, they were 7.2. So I'm saying they're going to be at eight yards per play. Um, And again, I, 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 like I said, that's, you know, over that, that's a yard more than what anybody else has done against Michigan State. So tell me, Tom, where do we go from here? Uh, You can either have, uh, have it be 8.3 yards per play, or you must remove the longest play from scrimmage for Ohio State in the first four minutes of the second quarter. Just the longest one. The first four minutes of the second quarter. Eight, you, eight, now you're talking my language. 8.3 yards per play, or you remove the longest play from scrimmage for the first four minutes of the second quarter. I have to go with the second one just because of the the fun that people can have with that one because that is amazing time. That's right in my wheelhouse. You know I can't say no to that. That's That's actually not fair, and it's mm-hmm. taking advantage <laughs> of somebody. Um, and this is going to be a, a lot. So a Buckeye offense, what <laughs> minus the, the longest play, the first four, first minutes, four minutes of the second quarter minus, I, it feels like you're, you're tricking me here on something. And I'm like, <laughs> what, what? he's just doing what I've done, but Trevian Henderson is going 99 yards on the first play of the second quarter. And I'm going to <laughs> put a video on just, I mean, I put, you remember, you know, the Tom Cruise risky business, uh, Underwear slide. I'm going to put that video of me doing that on on Twitter when Travian Henderson goes 99 yards on that uh, in that in that four minute span. And then uh, what would be even greater is if they still went over eight <laughs> eight, eight yards per play minus that. That was that was me last week. I was uh, I was celebrating a little too early. Have you did you see the video of Tony Alford as a player at Colorado State this week? Mm. There was a video of Tony Alford against Colorado. And he celebrated too early. Like he celebrated right before he crossed the goal line and like lost the football in Colorado recovered. I don't know if it got called a touchdown or not, but uh, yeah, it was, it was Tony Alford during his playing days. That was me last week. I was, uh, I was spiking the football on you as Ohio state was driving down the field with a chance to have a fifth different player. It was all different players on the field. And then they knelt on the ball on the five yard line. So yes, that was, that was me last week. I will not make that mistake again. Probably. Probably. Uh, my, my, <laughs> Did you okay? Yeah, you're like. Did you do your fifth one yet? Because I, I have not done my done. fifth one yet. Okay. I've not done my fifth one. So okay, all right. Uh, CJ Stroud, 350 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's only done that twice this year. Yeah, I have to allow that. I mean, it's, um, it, it's it's if I'm the guy who is telling people that what CJ Stroud is doing is not ordinary. And I guess I can't also be the guy saying, but he does it every week. Like he's what, only done that twice. Deal? He's only done every, that twice. <laughs> he's done it at least almost every week. Sometimes at least, at least two, two of the weeks, he's done it 100% of the weeks, Tom. So I guess I have to allow that. Like, once again, you, you, you've predicted me into a corner here and I do not care for it. CJ Stroud, 350, three touchdowns. No interceptions. Is he allowed to fumble the ball, Tom? Uh, that that was not in that was not in here. So it, it is it is uh, fumbles. Fumbles are allowed. No interceptions. Okay, must fumble once. <laughs> must be between thirteen twenty three yes. and thirteen eighteen of the third quarter. And not bounce further than six yards from the <laughs> point of origin of the fumble. We will get there eventually. Don't worry. We're going to be doing some trigonometry on the television on these things. We're going to get this figured out eventually. This shows okay. more comp- this shows more complicated than a Greg Schiano defense. Am I right? <laughs> too soon, Tom. Too soon. Mm. Too soon. Too mm. soon to talk about Tennessee and Greg Schiano. Too soon to talk about a lot of things. My now we're going to the two pointers. This is serious. This is where things can get one. That's where mm-hmm. the, this is where we want it. <laughs> we this is where I won it <laughs> last week. <laughs> The first person to ever get a bonus prediction correct. Now, I, I, I was going to say, I'm now I'm going to become the second person, but I'm still the first. I'll just do it again. Ohio State will be something they have only been once this season, but something that Michigan State has never been. Ohio State plus three in turnovers. Michigan State has never, hasn't even turned the ball over three times this season. So I'm saying Ohio State plus three in turnovers for my two-pointer. 
That's they've been, that's a yeah. That's a, you're 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 thinking I'm going to fight you on it, and I'm not going to fight you on it. Plus two, except to say, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that from the eight minute mark to the three minute mark of the third quarter, turnovers. Do, you know, Michigan State turnovers do not count, and Ohio State turnovers count double. <laughs> eight minute to three minute in the third quarter, Michigan State turnovers don't count. <laughs> No, that sounds terrible. It's happy hour for turnovers. Uh, you already said it was sufficient. It is if, sufficient. That's fine. That's fine. And counting double, Tom, <laughs> you've gone too far trying to lure me into my own favorite predictions. Not this time. So that was that is my two pointer. Ohio State plus three in turnovers. We shall see, Tom. What is your first bonus prediction? Deal Chambers as a career high in tackles of seven. He breaks that by at least three this week, 10 or more tackles for steel chambers this week, three or more above his career high for two points. You would, you would hope you would do that. He's going to be playing a lot more doing, get, going to be going against Kenneth Walker bunch. Correct. This yes. feels like it could be like a 12 tackle thing, but uh, you're predicting his career high by a significant number, almost double, not double, almost 50%. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as soon as you, you started out by saying steel chambers will have a career high of seven tackles. And I was going to be like for two points, <laughs> this is your prediction. <laughs> and then, uh, then you, do I look like you come on. <laughs> so 10 tackles. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite my favorite part of these shows is where you spend like 45 seconds explaining why wow that is an extremely bold prediction now here is why i will not allow it for some reason or here is some in, insane uh you know caveat i have to add to this he the must only make cap- two of those he must make two of those tackles while wearing his shoes on his hands the only thing i will say is no tackles at any 17 yard line count <laughs> And Tom <laughs> tackles at the 34 count double. <laughs> you know, you want it. I kind of do want it. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to decide. I'm trying to decide which one is more. I think, I think I will accept that Tack- tackles at the 34 count double tackles at the, at the 17 do not count. This is so stupid. Um, <laughs> there's the, there's the title of the episode. 14 bold predictions for Ohio State versus Michigan State, colon. This is so stupid. Yes, uh, so 17-yard line does not count. 34-yard line counts double. This okay. is like a, a four-down stand at the 34. <laughs> <laughs> Every tackle is He's gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to win this. I'm going to win this in the first quarter. He's going to have yeah three tackles in a row at the, at the 34. Here's my thinking here. Where are they going to start most drives? If Ohio State scores touchdowns, they're starting it on the 25. So Mm -hmm. one of those 17s is probably largely out of play. You know, not not entirely Mm -hmm. possible. He could have a sack or a big tackle for loss or something like that. You know, you're you're probably, you know, there's a possibility Michigan State moves up and down the field but can't necessarily do it in the red zone. So you're probably around those 34s more than those 17s. No, I I think sucker. Exactly. You you just made this easier for me. I did. I really I wanted to have some fun for the people. And I realized after I did it that I should not have said that. But <laughs> you know what? Uh, it, I think I would be happy if you finally got one of your bonus predictions right. You've never, it's never happened to you. So if we can do that for you here, that would be for tremendous. My final bold prediction <clears throat> two Ohio State non defensive linemen show up in the sack category. Only Five non-defensive linemen have had a, a sack or half a sack this season in 10 games. So that's on average a half every game. How, how many and, how many sacks have they had? I, I would five have shown up. Four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. Um, so I am saying at least two show up. And I don't know if that has happened at all this season. Um, but if it has, then it means it hasn't happened any other time. Basically, and if it, it's probably accurate, if anybody, I mean, who, who's to say we don't have box scores that we can look up at this point? It's not good. 
it's not a good show if we're just looking up stats, Tom. So now, does that mean one sack total? Who's who's to say, Tom? Uh, you probably. I will. I will say. Since this is for three points and not for two, must total at least one point five. Okay. And does not count from six minutes to four and a half minutes in the second quarter. Six minutes to four. Okay, but sacks on the 34 are double. <laughs> I mean, that's just canon, right? I mean, that's fine. Yes. Yes. So um what one said- and a half, one and a half, you know, must total one and a half. <clears throat> so stupid. <laughs> All right, and then uh, uh, six minutes to four and a half minutes in the second quarter does not count. But sacks in the thirty, but sacks in the thirty-four count double. Now, what if it's a sack in the the six to four 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 and a half minute mark on a thirty-four? Well, I'm sorry, I said mine first, so that would supersede yours. I don't write the rules. I, I do mm. like the fact that these, you know, these have started on, you know, the notes app on my, on my computer. <laughs> it started with just like, you know, like single mm-hmm. lines and just like Garrett Wilson, 150 yards receiving or whatever. And now it's like, it just starts with, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And it's just like <laughs> wall of text. It's great. I, I, I missed one. I didn't have my fourth one, Tom. I, I have a one pointer that I did not give you. Uh, okay. Which, what was the one pointer you did not give me? A Buckeye will score his first points of the season Mm-mm. after the 200 and 300 yard passing. Okay. A Buckeye will score his first points of the season. So, uh, I mean, this, if this is a one pointer, this is, we are far enough into the season that mm-hmm. is inherently bold. So yes, I will, I will allow it. And I'm just thinking through right now, <clears throat> what am I not thinking of that will uh, end up hosing me on this? CJ Stroud running it perhaps. I mean, I, eventually Marvin Harrison, or yeah. Mike Igbuka or Julian Fleming is going to catch a touchdown pass. I'm, I'm trying to remember if like Dom DiMaggio has kicked an extra point at any point this season. I feel like he might have against like, you know, like the backup kicker. Uh, PAT I can tell you or that, something like that right now. He well, I mean, that's, that's not what I'm most worried about. Two extra but, uh, points. Two extra points. Okay. So, yeah. Um, no, I, I think we are, we are at the point of the season where that is inherently bold. So. Thank you. All right. So that's a, that's a good one. Uh, my last one. For the first time this season. Ohio State either misses a placement kick or has a punt for a touchback. None of the none of those have happened this year. Special teams is absolutely perfect. There was a question during Ryan Day's Tuesday press conference about how the special teams have been extremely perfect, and I thought, I know what's going to happen this week. So it's not bold. I, I mean, it's it has not happened all year. I just <clears throat> the fact that the fact that I can see the future that's that shouldn't be held against me. Now, Tom, let's remind folks. That one of your midseason bold predictions was that Ohio State would not have any touchbacks this year. Friends, this is the episode where Tony learns about hedging. Go on, yes. I just don't want you, I don't want to see you bet against yourself, Tom. I think you need, I know you have self esteem issues. Mm-hmm. I want you to bet on yourself. I want you to say no touchbacks this week, and I will give you three points for it. Ohio State has no <laughs> touchbacks <laughs> this <laughs> week. Three points, done. No, no pun. I'm, no I'm, puns for touchback this week. That's fine. Good. No, I just said no touchbacks. Uh, <laughs> there could be any kind, any number of touchbacks. So let me say this. I don't like that as a three pointer. So we're going to have to, because a, a punt for a touchback can happen. You, you know, at this point in close games in November, you punt from the 40 into the end zone. I mean, I would, never punt. Been I would never punt from the 40. So that's, that sounds like that's not my problem. Let me. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. You know, chop this up a little bit. So the placement, I will agree, but nothing over 40 yards, <laughs> because I can. I can. You know, missing a 40 plus yard field goal. That's normal. College kickers. He hasn't missed one yet this season. How um, many let's, has he let's, taken? let's hear your. Let's. I don't know. 15 mm. or something. A no, bunch. of 40 yarders. Oh, I don't know. Um, so, as you said, stats are impossible to access this time of year. So, um, let's let's hear what your cat what your restrictions are for the uh, for the touchback. I'll I'll tell you what I will tell you what. Here's here's how we do this: the placement, the distance for the field goal, anything outside that number 
does not count as a miss. But anything inside that number, uh, you cannot exclude for a touchback. So if you know if you say it has to be a 50-yard field goal or longer, the punt that goes in for a touchback would have to be longer than 50 yards in order to not count. So we're saying I'm saying nothing over 40 yards on the placement. So, so that means that any punt from inside the 40 would also you can't you cannot exclude any punt from inside the 40. Um, I, I I don't like that this is a three pointer, um, because now I'm like, well, if we're going to make it 45, and I feel like <clears throat> I, I disagree with this being a, a three pointer, but the show has gone on long enough. So we have reached our, our minute total that we needed to. What else can I put on this? I will agree to this. However, I need, I need to hear the yardage total first. 45. What is, what is, 45. Okay. Misplacement kick of 45 or less. Or punt for a touchback of 45 or more. The most exciting no. part. Of, the most exciting part of this is where I thought about this, and then I thought this is going to work out, and then I convinced myself in my head, no, I've actually made it so that he wins both ways or loses both ways. But I was right. This was, in fact, this did, in fact, balance balance the uh, bet correctly. So you, what, you once have, I finish, mm -hmm. what could I add to this to make me agree with you? Because Tom, I do not agree with you right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what kind of time frames? Okay. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. No, no placement. I, I have nothing, Tom. I am completely spent. <laughs> I couldn't even. I feel like we've uh, th this is so complicated at this point. Both of us could get everything right, and I'm not sure we would tally it up correctly. Um, you know, I think you know what I think that means. I think that means I've already won. That's what I think. I think I think I have already won this week. If you were if you were waving the white flag of surrender, this is this is like the guys who bet against the opening lines. And if the lines move in their favor, they're already like, well, even if I lose the bet, I've already I've established the value. That's that's what I am right now. Even even if I lose, I've already established my dominance over you this week. So really, I've won. How about this? Missed field goals. That begin at the 34 yard line, which we know <laughs> is good. So you, I'm talking like a 51 yarder mm -hmm. does not count for you. <clears throat> That's fine. We've already said a misplacement kicker 45 or more. Oh, from the wait, 34, no. I meant from 34. No, wait, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, wait. yeah th uh, Yes, <laughs> correct. So a 34 year, 34 yard field goal would not count for you if, if you missed it. A missed 34 yard field goal, which, you know, the real, the real piece of, uh, of work there is that where, where is the ball spotted on a 34 yard field goal? The 24 at, well, yes, but where is the, where is the ball snapped from on a 34 <laughs> the 17. at the 17, which what were our two exclusions earlier? Boom, the 34. I, I mean, it's kids that we have to, yes, we have to. Okay. This place we kick her 45 or less excluding. 34 or a punt for a touchback of 45 or more for the first time this season. Uh, I think when, that's when, perfection by the, hopefully we will have figured out whether, you know, which one of us won by like Wednesday next week. And we can actually record this show. If, if the show's late last next week, just, just assume that Tony and I are still trying to figure out who won by uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. I'm going to have to send this away to like the art school where you draw the turtle <laughs> and, and then they'll give us our grades back and tell us exactly who won. So six to eight weeks, we should have everything mm -hmm. settled for you guys and, and let you know how it went. I, I can't wait to find out uh, just in time for spring ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. So, Tony got a crocodile and spelling. That's what that's, that's what this is going to be. Well, you know, one of us, one of us is going to win, but yeah, we will have to send away. This is going to be a correspondence course. I like, I like that. Yeah. But, but you will know who won the national championship of football before you knew, know who won this week's. And you know what? What's next week, Michigan? What, what, oh <laughs> next, what, what, what's next? What's next week, Michigan? It's Tony week. Nope. Let's try that again. <laughs> good, good news. Your brain isn't the only one. The show has broken. I, I'm sure our Michigan week predictions are not going to be any more ridiculous. So I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be fine. Michigan Michigan week tends to turn everything turn everything down. It should be fine. I don't anticipate any craziness next week unless we do twenty bold predictions. Your thoughts? Oh, geez, Tom. I think we. I mean. Because what the show does, and we'll wrap up here, Michigan Week, we take it up a notch. 
mm-hmm. I don't know how we do that now <laughs> because I feel like there are, we have continued to take this prediction show up almost some might say too many notches. I wouldn't mm. say that. You wouldn't mm. say that. Um, 40 bold predictions. No. 20 is plenty. 25 tops. 34 bold predictions. Tom. <laughs> or less. you could do 17 that count double. There you go. Yes. I think that's, I think that's the plan for sure. 17, two point predictions next week. That's, that's a perfect. That will do it for this show. I want to thank you all for tuning in. As always, reminder to find us here on YouTube at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Go ahead and subscription button. We'll, you'll be notified when something drops. Or if you want the audio version, as always, just any podcast platform, do a search of Buckeye Weekly and you'll find us there. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>